Good morning and welcome to Rising. We have a fantastic show for you today, including a great interview with Gabriel Shipton, who is Julian Assange's brother, and he is going to update us on all the latest involving Julian Assange's possible freedom and or extradition and continuing prosecution. We don't know, but we're going to get to the bottom of it with uh, Gabriel Shipton. Absolutely. Do stick around for that. But up first, as we end closer and closer to the 2024 presidential race, Democrats' attack on third-party candidates in the race are broadening to include their running mates. Independent candidate RFK Jr.'s billionaire running mate, Nicole Shanahan, has become the focus of a Silicon Valley persuasion campaign with the goal of getting her to drop off the ticket. Now, last week, we covered the dust-up between San Francisco Representative Ro Khanna and Nicole Shanahan that began when he pinned a letter to her encouraging her to step down. Now, new reporting in Puck News reveals that the Silicon Valley campaign extends well beyond the progressive congressman. Democratic political operative James Carville reportedly tried to dig up personal dirt on Shanahan by emailing her ex-husband, Google founder Sergey Brin's first wife. Now, recall that Shanahan's divorce, divorce from Brin in 2023 is the source of the funds that have allowed her to help finance the Kennedy campaign. Mm. According to Semaphore, Carvel's digging is focused on Shanahan's two marriages. As he told the outlet in an interview, the tech industry is like Hollywood and there's all sorts of stuff floating around out there. I would be totally stunned if she wasn't a really strange person in the eyes of most people. Forgive me for not doing a James Carvel accent there. I didn't <laughs> think I could pull it off. Pat Dennis, president of the Super PAC American Bridge, for which Carvel is a consultant, told Semaphore that the inquiries were part of a vetting process that the American people expect and that we're not going to let his running mate, Nicole Shanahan, get away with shady behavior or anti-science conspiracy theories either. He went on to say that inquiries are focused on substantive issues beyond her personal life. So, again, the, the major headline here is, I think, how spooked Democratic uh, consultants, the Biden re-election campaign, is by RFK Jr. and N Nicole Shanahan. I think that is abundantly clear. They perceive this to be a major threat to his re-election, and they are going looking for everything. Now, they've already accused um, RFK Jr. of, you know, anti-science, racist, conspiracy theorizing, all of that. We've had those news cycles over and over again. So I don't know what they, you know, they're going to find posts from her, things she said. I, I see her, you know, tweeting stuff that they're going to say is, is against vaccines and anti-science. So that, like, that is available to them if that's what they're going for. It's not, it's not well, it like seems, they have to dig so deeply. It seems so far that that's not, in fact, what they're going for, that they're looking for more personal information right. by reaching out to Right, because that's not working. Wife, they need those things. By reaching out to the first wife of her, ex, uh, her ex-husband. And that seems to be the, the kind of defensiveness of saying, oh, we promise we're looking at, at policy issues, not just digging into personal dirt, seems to be kind of betrayed by what we found out so far. Remember also a lot of the reporting initially when it came out that she was the VP pick and when the association between um, the two of them came out, generally speaking, because she funded his Super Bowl campaign to the tune of $4 million, was that she had been known to the press for allegedly having this affair with Elon Musk. Now, that is not substantiated, right, but it does seem like there has it. been a prurient interest in her and her life throughout. It's ironic also because Simifor reported that James Carville apparently said he believes Kennedy is more of a threat to Trump than to Biden, undermining this whole effort. If you think that, in fact, she is not going to cause, or RFK Jr., the whole ticket is not going to cause uh, Joe Biden to lose because of a spoiler effect by third parties, this targeting um, this um, kind of oppo campaign that's emerging against her does seem to be perhaps rooted less in actual concern for Joe Biden's electoral prospects and maybe in just a more core dislike hmm. for this candidate and this pairing. I think there is a sense of betrayal, a, a totally unearned sense of betrayal that Democratic consultants are feeling by this woman who is very wealthy and has donated very uh, prolifically to democratic causes and that she and the kind of silicon valley tech corridor that she represents or the world she's been in is not sufficiently loyal to joe biden i think that might be at the root of it that um biden consultants expect to draw significant support from these from this sector of the economy this sector of business um and are feeling that 
they they were owed the support of people like her. Well, I don't know that it was unearned. It's not that she uh, owes any fidelity to Joe Biden, but if you are a Democrat for your entire life and you say it's because you're committed to various Democratic policies, to the extent that you're now moving away from those policy objectives, people can change their minds. But it is, of course, a kind of betrayal, the same way that anyone who's conservative would think it was a betrayal if uh, uh, Donald Trump came out and said, I, I don't think that we should um, go after the deep state, or if he suddenly said, uh, I think America should come second, that would be a betrayal. So I think it's perfectly fair to look at her and ask, well, is she just willing to, what side of her bread is actually buttered? What does well, she actually believe in? She's on her timeline right now making critical statements about student debt relief, which frankly are out of step with what RFK Jr. has said about student debt relief. Yeah, so if she for is going through some kind of political transition, and she is going to be potentially the vice president of the United States of America to a not young man. I mean, Kennedy is very healthy and fit and all those things, but he is in his 70s. Then I do think it's worth asking what she actually believes in. Right. I mean, RFK Jr. is running on the idea that the Democratic Party, he did not leave the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party left him, that it has betrayed um, its values, values that he used to share and all of that. We know less about her specific views because we haven't gotten to hear from her as much, which I hope we can remedy. We'd love to interview her on our show. Um, by the way, yeah, and, and going back to uh, you know what you said about Carville's assumption that he's actually hurting Trump more, RFK Jr. has been going after Trump as much as Biden, he had a tweet um, yesterday that maybe we can put up on screen if we have it. A second Trump presidency would be bad for the country. This is RFK Jr. saying this. President Trump had his chance. He failed. He said he'd drain the swamp. Instead, he filled his government with corporate insiders. He said he'd cut the deficit, bloated it instead. He said he'd put America first. Instead, he let bureaucrats like Tony Fauci shut down the entire country. We don't know what shape the next crisis will take, but we will know there will be one. When it happens, we need a leader who can be trusted to stand for peace, freedom, and truth. So yeah. he's not, uh, he, he is running a campaign against both both people, saying that I, you should not choose either of these people, I'm the person I want you to support. Yeah. It's not like Look. a Vivek Ramaswamy where I'm ostensibly running against Trump, but I'm actually running as his biggest fan or something. He's not doing that. Yeah, I, th this is interesting. I, I feel as though there's a lot of credit that you get, at least in these kind of online political spaces, for saying, hey, I was wrong. I've changed my mind on an issue. Nicole Shanahan has been massaging her pivot on COVID, saying, oh, I was misled, I was wrong, but now you guys were all right, and, um, you know, this is a dangerous vaccine. This is something that she's recently tw uh, tweeted on her um, page. And I understand why people think that that is a good move, why that some people think that's a move that demonstrates a certain kind of uh, credibility and ability to eat crow and admit when you're wrong, and that it's better than the alternative. But I would argue that the best thing is to have someone who has demonstrated an ability to get things right, even when it's hard, over time. That was part of what the appeal of Bernie Sanders was to so many voters, that he, unlike a lot of newcomers to the scene, he had decades of history in Congress where he took hard votes and took hard positions before they became politically popular. That's why people trusted that he would stay the course if he were to become president. And I do worry that some of these newcomers, they 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 can read the tea leaves. They understand what's popular on the internet. They're willing to say they're mea culpa, it's culpas and change their mind. But if you're willing to change your mind this many times in the short course of as knowing who you are, what assurances are there for the American public that when you get into the office, you're going to be who you say you're going to be? And I think that applies both to RFK Jr. and Nicole Shanahan to a certain extent. Mm. That's true. I mean, yes, better to be a true believer in the things I believe in all the way along and have some voting record that demonstrates that to actually be in government to do it. But that applies to very few individuals, at least of my ideological persuasion, like Ron Paul is the only one. Yeah, that's so a good example. The, the best, and I think that he's yeah. earned that trust and confidence. Right, he was against FISA whenever he was for it. He was yeah. against invading Iraq when, it, when so many people in the Republican uh, coalition, many people in the Democratic coalition, were, uh, were for it. But um, you know what? I rather a Johnny, a Johnny come lately, a flip flopper who flips and flops the right way than someone who steadfastly maintains their belief in status policies, in sure. my view. All right, stick around. As we said, we've got a really good show for you coming up next.